Hey guys, welcome to the Trash Picture Show. Tonight I went to see Terminator Dark Fate. And is it a good movie? No. Is it a bad movie? Not really. It's it's a fun movie. It's a popcorn flick. It is pure and simple a popcorn flick. It's certainly an improvement upon prior installments. Yes, it's better than Terminator Genesis and T3 Rise of the Machines. I'd say it's par with um, Salvation. But yeah, is it better than the prior ones? It's better in such a way that Chlamydia is better than Leukemia. You still don't want to get fucking Chlamydia, like, you know? So, the main saving, saving grace for me is the cast. You have Linda Hamilton returning as the awesome Sarah Connor. And Sarah has gone through some stuff in this movie and it's turned her into a kind of William Money-esque version of Sarah Connor. She's very kind of dry and salty and angry and, and, and shit has happened to her that has kind of destroyed her entire worldview. I won't embellish too much on that because it's it's a big factor in the plot. You also have Mackenzie Davis as Grace, a augmented soldier from the future. She's very like, say, Marcus Wright from Terminator Salvation or Dudley from the Terminator Dark Horse comics. She is a amalgamation of both cyborg and human. Natalia Reyes is also good as Danny. A lot of people were bitching about her saying that her character doesn't have much in the way of development and she's kind of just this, this kind of scared, kind of shook girl. But if you go back to the original 1984 Terminator, Linda Hamilton's first appearance as Sarah Connor, she she was terrified. She was she was a damsel in distress in that movie, but she slowly becomes a soldier, slowly becomes a warrior, and we only really see that fulfilled in Terminator 2. So I wouldn't give Natalie Reyes' character too much of a bollock, and she done her best with what she was given. Arnie appears not for very long, though, as a mysterious Terminator by the name of Carl, who joins our heroes. And he's pretty funny. There is an element with his plot I'm not too fond of. He He's essentially kind of achieved uh, an emotional form of sentience. And he he's shacked up with a, a, a wife and child. And you're kind of left wondering, what, what, how, how? And the explanation is, is very kind of, um, the explanation is very watery to say the least. But he is fun in it. I do think this is going to be Arnie's last last appearance as the Terminator. There's a line in, there's actually a line in the movie where uh, Arnie goes, uh, I don't think I'll be back. And it's like, okay, that's a bit on the nose. And the main bad guy, the Rev-9, played by, I think, Gabriel Luna. He is essentially the new big bad Terminator. He is a combination of a metal endoskeleton with a poly alloy that can separate into two entities, which is pretty cool. I like I like the abilities of the Rev-9. I don't like the personality because Gabriel Luna's Rev-9 it has this swagger to him. And they try and embellish the kind of cheekiness that Robert Patrick's T-1000 has. And they go, they go totally over the top. He ends up reminding me of some fucking douchebag who you'd know from school, who'd be boasting about how many girls he was with or how he did in the match. He just came across as this really fucking egotistical kind of dick rather than a killer robot. Other gripes I had with the movie. The plot, without getting too much into spoilers, um, the plot is very convoluted in that they do acknowledge the events of T2 Judgment Day where the events were stopped by John, Sarah, and the Terminator in Terminator 2. But another robot, Armageddon, has surfaced. And it's not Skynet this time. It's a, it's a computer system called Legion. So it kind of sets up the, the idea that something like this will be inevitable. And I just thought that was in, in very convoluted. Like... When when Sarah meets Grace and is telling her about her history, she's like, oh yeah, my son was John Connor, we fought Skynet, and Grace is like, 
never heard of him. Yet Grace calls the, the Rev-9 a Terminator and she also refers to the, the, the vehicles, the, the Terminator's Legion vehicles as HKs, which were called that in, in the uh, prior movies. I think if anyone is going in with the expectation that this is going to be the next kind of chapter, official chapter in the Terminator saga, they're going to be incredibly disappointed. This thing just, it, it does kind of shit all over everything that was established. Again, it's it's a shite sight better than, than the prior entries such as T3 and Genesis. Again, I, I would say it's probably on par with Salvation. Maybe maybe a wee bit under it. Um I just think it, it doesn't really it doesn't really honor what came before it. And it it's it's attempting to kind of reboot the franchise. And I, I don't know if that's if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think they're going about it the wrong way. Uh, the visual effects. Some of the visual effects are fantastic. And in other parts they're absolutely shit. I think this is most evident in the early fights in the car factory. Where the Rev-9 is kind of bouncing around the place. And um, where he's jumping from the truck during the freeway chase. I did enjoy the kind of ba aerial battle with the two cargo planes. And, and him trying to intercept the cargo planes. I thought that was... I thought that was very interesting. But by and large, this is very much a popcorn flick. If you're looking for something that that is the definitive continuation of the Terminator saga, I would suggest watch the Sarah Connor Chronicles because that is far more honourable and, and far more in line with what this movie sets up. Again, I think the main saving points of this is Linda Hamilton returning as a very grizzled and jaded Sarah Connor and Mackenzie Davis, who is, I'm kind of crushing on, she's an almost Amazonian looking kind of warrior woman from the future. But yeah, it, it's fun, but it's definitely not a flick I would consider to be a legitimate addition to the Terminator uh, saga. So yeah, I would, I would probably wait till this comes out in DVD to check it out. Arnie is good, Arnie is funny, the cast is good. Uh, Gabriel Luna, I just think his direction was bad. Uh, oh, one last note is, I think James Cameron is one cheeky motherfucker. He is, he's done it again. He was claiming that like, oh, this is the definitive, this is the definitive continuation of my story. I think he just did that, like he did with Genesis, to get a paycheck so he can make more five or six more fucking movies about intergalactic giant smurfs in 3d <laughs> rather than um rather than actually give a shit about the terminator saga i don't think he's given a shit about the terminator saga for 2003 maybe 16 years yeah i i genuinely think this is a, a, a letdown there was a lot of potential here with with linda hamilton returning grace's character was very interesting i just think that that they they dropped the ball. The opening was very. I thought it was very bold. I'm not, again, I'm not going to give away the plot. That the opening does catch you kind of for a loop, but by and large, the rest of the movie lets down what could potentially be a very good story. So uh, yeah, that's my review of Terminator: Dark Fate. Have you seen it? What did you think? And did you enjoy it? And what is your favorite Terminator movie? Even if the even if it's one of the latter ones, I don't mind. Leave them in the comments below and tell me why and what you thought of this. So my name is Martin. This has been the Trash Picture Show, and uh, have a good one. Take care. Bye now.